Hey, what's up everyone? e and I4 back with another action figure review. Today we are looking at the Hasbro Marvel Legends, the Infinity Saga, Iron Man Mark 85, and Thanos from the Avengers Endgame. So, this is quite the big box. There they are displayed on the front through the window packaging, looking very, very nice. Side art, nothing really crazy here has been the same for a lot of these figures. On the right side we have the read up for Thanos which says Thanos is a destructive force that will stop at nothing to achieve his goals. And going towards the middle we have the poster of Avengers Endgame which they changed to have Tony Stark within the helmet for whatever reason. And on the right side we get the read up for Iron Man Mark 85 that reads Iron Man steps onto the battlefield against Thanos in the ultimate fight for the fate of the universe. So coming right out of the package, they are displayed as so. We have Thanos with the dusting away face sculpt. And we have Iron Man with his battle damaged um, face sculpt. Now I do find it interesting that Tony is battle damaged in the head area, but not in the armor at all. The armor is 100% clean, like it wasn't even in battle. So that seems a little weird to see. A battle damage face but no damage on the armor unless it's self repairing armor but we all know how his armor looked like in the movie and it was not clean like this i think this is just to give us another mark 85 uh to you know kind of upgrade from the previous one that we got and this can dub as that final battle tony stark when he snaps and also as that mark 85 armor but i think they could have accomplished this with a battle damage armor as well I just feel like it would have made more sense to have a battle damage armor if we're going to recreate this scene. So first up we're going to show the accessories for Iron Man. Here's the Mark 85 helmet. Uh, nothing crazy here. Something different that we do see is the neck piece. This is something new that Hasbro did for this release. Every single head sculpt for Iron Man comes with a neck piece. So I think they did this so you could not swap heads. But even so, it's a separate piece that is being held on by a ball joint peg barbell so it can come off even if it's hard I can't get it to focus but even if it's hard to come off you could still heat it up and it'll slip right off but there's that head and then we also do get a separate Tony head which is right here with the separate neck piece but I already separated it just to show you guys that you can separate the head and the neck piece but here's the neck piece with the big old barbell joint and then here's the head alone so uh, you can actually if you want to still use this head sculpt on other figures see it's a ball joint there uh, we'll take a look at that later on in the video but check out the the likeness this is the best robert downey jr tony stark head that we've gotten from marvel legends without a doubt hands down the best so this one's clean it's not a battle damage so if you don't want him you know all messed up then you can have this head sculpt on now the one that comes on the figure looks like this so if we put them both side by side you can take a look at the difference there also come to think of it now that I look at the figure more I don't think they did the separate neck piece as a evil way to prevent you from head swapping I think it really is just to pull off the you know the dual head swaps of having the armored version and the non armored version because if you have the same neck for both it would not look good so that makes sense. Um, it you know when you separate it, that's what it looks like, and then when you plug it in, you really can't even tell. I mean that neck is in there pretty tight, so it almost looks like that's part of the figure that does not separate when it really does separate. So it's pretty dope. I think that's really the real reason why there is a separate neck piece for the head swaps on this Tony Stark. Now if I put the armored helmet on with the armored neck, you can see that looks like it's all connected and it makes sense. Tony also comes with his shield effect that he uses in the movie. That clips on with just a clip right there on the back there. You can put it on his forearm or wrist. So that's cool. And then we also do get his little blade that he also uses in the movie. So that's also pretty cool. Then we get some pretty standard repulsor blast effects which we always get with Iron Man. We get a pair of fists for hands. And a pair of open hands with peg holes in it so you can plug in those effects. And then lastly, the hands on the actual figure itself consist of a right hand that is snapping and then just an open grabbing left hand so you can grab that blade that he comes with. As for Danos, of course he has that dusted head sculpt. He also comes with this head sculpt with the helmet on and his teeth exposed. 
Then we get one without the helmet, which is pretty neutral. And then one that he is uh, smiling without the helmet as well. So you get the best of everything, helmet, unhelmet, and the dusted version. Last but not least, we have his sword accessory that he uses. Here's a closer look at Thanos. So you could take a better look at that dusted head sculpt. It looks okay. I mean, it's not 100% like it was in the movie. Um, but it looks okay. It almost looks like he's burned. But I can kind of see the dusting effect a little bit. It really does look like dirt on his armor for the chest. But for the head, it does look pretty cool. Um, I just feel like it's not 100% there. I don't think I'm going to display him with this head. Although his armor has, you know, the uh, the dusting effects on there. He also comes with the red gauntlet, which he puts on it's in a snapping pose. But there's no infinity stones inside of it, which is accurate because when he tried to snap with the gauntlet in the movie, he had no infinity stones because Tony had already stripped them from it. So that's pretty nice. Here's the other forearm. And going down to the legs. He has an alternate fist for that gauntlet. Which I think I forgot to show. Which do have the infinity stones. Because he did have it momentarily. He's not snapping here. He's just making a fist. So I like that you can have him with the stones. But you cannot have him snapping with the stones. Because that never happened. So pretty nice. Here's a look at him with his alternate head on. This is the smiling grinning head sculpt without the helmet. Here is the more serious head scope without the helmet. And then here is that straining, angry um, head scope with the helmet attached. One more time, here's a look at Tony with the helmet attached. And then here he is with the non battle damage unmasked head scope, which is the best head scope of the three for sure. Now, here's a closer look at the Iron Man Mark 85. Here is the battle damage head scope. His mouth is slightly opened on this one, very, very slightly, can't really tell too much, but looks good. Here is the torso, the gold paint is very nice. Uh, also note that the only hand sculpt with the stones is the snapping uh, hand. All the other hands, all the alternate hands that he comes with does not have the infinity stones attached, so if you don't want him... With the stones and just want a regular mark 85 then you can do so just not without you know the snapping fingers which makes sense going down to the legs and then here's the back uh, so the articulation of iron man consists of a barbell peg for the head so he looks up about this high and then he looks down about that low left and right no problem got head tilts pretty nice because of that you know barbell joint Arms are going to go forward and back. They're kind of ratcheted a little bit. Little clicks. So all the way up. All the way down. In and out. Pretty far. You could hear the ratcheting going on there. Um, bicep swivel. Double jointed elbows. They're not pinless. We have swivel at the wrist and a hinge. Diaphragm joint at the torso. Goes all the way around. Forward and back. Side to side. And tilting of course. No way swivel. T-jointed legs will kick forward about this far. They go back down. In and out, thigh swivels, double jointed pinned knees, ankle hinge forward and back, ankle swivel, and ankle rocker at the foot. So um, I'm pretty sure this is probably the same mold from before, but I could be wrong because I know for a fact that the torso piece has to be different. Do not recall the neck and head combination for the head, so they probably retooled that. But the rest, I don't see why they wouldn't make a new skull for it, so probably is the same for the rest of the body now i don't have that original mark 85 that's actually a pretty hard figure to uh, find nowadays so this is actually a good release to help out the people that missed out on that release or no longer have that release now you can get your mark 85 right here so taking a look at thanos thanos actually has a ball jointed hinge for the neck so he looks up pretty high it looks down not so much until the head pops off because his jaw gets in the way. So you can't really look down. Left and right, it'll go at an angle, unfortunately. And we get a little bit of a head tilt. Arms will go forward about that much until it hits his armor piece. That gets in the way, so now you're going to have to angle it out to get it to go all the way up. Go back down. They go in and out. There is no bicep swivel. There's only a single jointed elbow, but it does bend more than a 90 degree bend. So that is 
good. There's a swivel at that elbow, swivel at the wrist with a hinge, ab crunch at the torso, and a waist swivel? Maybe not. No, no waist swivel. So ab crunch only. There is no swiveling at the torso at all. So that kind of sucks. Legs will kick forward. They go back. They go in and out. Thigh swivel. Double jointed knees. We have ankle hinge, ankle rocker, and there is an ankle swivel as well. So first up, I'll compare Thanos next to the Iron Monger from the Infinity Saga line of figures. And you can see he is a massive figure, so he makes Thanos look pretty small here. Here we have Thanos next to the Mark III Infinity Saga Iron Man figure. And here we have Thanos next to Thanos. This is the Infinity War Thanos that came with the 10th Anniversary 3-pack with Doctor Strange and Iron Man. And you can just see here um, that they're about the same height, which makes sense. And that the face sculpt was already improved from that release to this release. Because this head sculpt is the same one that you see here, but it's got that face printing and it looks a lot more realistic than the one on this figure you can see here. Let's see if I can get it to show or compare them next to each other. Definitely is a improvement. You can see those scars and the eyes don't have those weird, you know, shadowy reddish color that this figure had. Definitely better. Let me go ahead and swap it and see how that looks. Should match up. Yeah, so that's perfect. I like that a lot. So you don't even have to get rid of this figure. Uh, this is the Infinity War outfit or attire. So this Thanos already comes with three heads. I mean, you're going to have two heads on the sideline put away, so you might as well use it for your Infinity War and upgrade that figure. And up next here, they are next to Obadiah Stane from that two-pack with the Iron Monger from the Infinity Saga line as well. Right, so here's something I wanted to do real quick is a comparison of that final snap or, you know, that moment in the movie when he is about to snap. So you can definitely see the differences here. This is the SHV Wars version on the right side. And of course we have the Marvel Legends on the left side. SHV figures always scale very small or smaller than Marvel Legends. So you can see here uh, how that looks next to this uh, Legends version of Tony Stark. And it is definitely bigger than the SHV Wars one. But something that the SHG Wars one did was actually have damage on the entire armor, not just the face. So that's something I was referring to earlier. And we also got some nice cool electric effects here. This is kind of recreating the scene when he first attaches the stones to the gauntlet and it, you know, powers up. That's what that is. What Legends is doing is the actual snap. So it's a little different. This one doesn't have the snap. It's just an open hand. So it's a little different. But still, you can still recreate the same scene with them too. Uh, another big difference, as you can see already, is the colors. A lot more vibrant, brighter red for the Legends. And a darker, more dirty, grimy look for the SH figures. In terms of lightness, I'm going to have to give it to Hasbro uh, for having a better head sculpt, face sculpt for Tony Stark. Definitely is the winner there. All right, and to wrap this up, here's a look at them with some accessories attached. I went ahead and changed out the gauntlet for Thanos. So he's got the fists with the stones in them. And he also has his little helicopter blades for uh, his accessory on the left hand. And then I got Iron Man here with his shield and sword or knife or blade or whatever you want to call that accessory there in his other hand. So I think that looks dope. My favorite part about this upgraded or I guess updated repaint of this armor is the paint the gold looks really good very nicely done with the red and it's uh, of course the best version of this suit so far definitely is better than the original which I don't have to compare unfortunately so I apologize for that so that's going to conclude this review if you enjoyed it please leave a like and comment down below your thoughts on the set Check out my previous Infinity Saga reviews and stay tuned for more coming up soon. Subscribe if you haven't done so already and as always, have a great day. Bye. That's crispy.